Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome back to another video. Now with the release of Cyberpunk finally happening just a few days ago now during this week, I thought I'd show you guys how to create a Cyberpunk themed YouTube banner. Now honestly, their branding is so nice and it's so clean that there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. I'm gonna be creating like this kind of minimal version of Cyberpunk's aesthetic for a YouTube banner. So if you're gonna be covering a lot of Cyberpunk gameplay and stuff like that, you can go ahead and follow this tutorial and make yourself a Cyberpunk banner. So as always guys, if you do learn something new in the video or you do enjoy please don't forget to leave a like and i don't always say this but as we're approaching the end of 2020 it would mean the world to me if we could hit 200 subscribers we're slowly on our way now and we're slowly climbing so if you do want to see more tutorials like this in the future please do hit that subscribe button but without further ado let's get on with the tutorial all right guys so the first thing you're obviously going to want to do is open up photoshop create a new document i already have a preset save for the youtube banner size however if you want to do the same these are the dimensions you're going to need. You're going to need it set to pixels, width 2560, height 1440, resolution 300 on pixels per inch, RGB color, and all the settings are the same as this. If you want to save this as a preset yourself, so when you open up new documents, you can come into save and you see I've got all these presets here. All you have to do is press this little button with the arrow going into the box, name it whatever you want and click save preset once you've set in all the parameters for it. So we're going to go ahead and open up YouTube banner. So once you've opened up your document, the first thing I always go ahead and do is open up Google, type in YouTube banner template, click on images. If you click on this first image here, I like to use this one because it's like a darker contrast. Just make sure the resolution of it is 2560 by 1440. Right click it, click copy image and control V to just paste it into Photoshop and it automatically pastes at the right size. Then what I like to do is get the square marquee or the rectangle marquee tool or press M on the keyboard. Zoom right in by holding Alt and using the scroll wheel on my mouse until you see this little pixel grid come up. Click this very, very top left one. I'm, I'm as zoomed out as I can be with the pixel grid still showing because I want to get the exact pixel that's actually in that corner. I'm gonna make a rectangle over this dark rectangle in the template, make a new layer and hit control backspace. It doesn't matter what color gets filled in in this point. It should be black or white because I believe the default Photoshop colors opens up with a black and white. So it should be black or white. So once I've made that rectangle, you're gonna hit control J on your keyboard, then hit control T and holding shift and alt so that it enlarges the rectangle equally on both sides you want to drag the sides out till they reach the edge of this darker rectangle just like that so it reaches right at the edge and then you're going to repeat it control j control t hold shift and alt and drag these handles out to the sides so these purple lines show up at the edge that just means it's snapped to the edge of the canvas and you've got the perfect size and the reason we're going to do that is what you're going to see now is we're going to click on the top layer, the top rectangle we just created, hold shift and click on the bottom rectangle, then come up to view, scroll all the way down and do new guides from shape. And now if we delete these rectangles, you can see we've got new guides and stuff. So you're going to see where this comes into play when we actually start designing the banner. It's just always good to use guides in Photoshop so you're not putting stuff over the edge or too close to the edges of stuff. And it's just nice highlighted in blue to remind you that they're there. So now we're going to start actually designing our banner. So what you want to do is get a rectangle marquee key tool again, new layer. I always like to highlight the top, this whole top section. And because we've made these rulers, now you'll see like it snaps to our rulers. So it makes it the exact sizes, which is exactly why we've made these rulers. So I'm just going to fill that in with black by doing alt backspace. If black is your primary color or command backspace if it's your secondary color which you can check by down here, the one at the front's primary, the one at the back secondary. Then you can hit Control D, hold Alt on your keyboard, making sure you're on the Move tool by pressing V. Hold Alt and drag this all the way down, holding, if you hold Shift, you can only drag it downwards. You see I'm moving my mouse left and right and it's only moving up and down. Just make sure that it's on the top and bottom, so all that we have left is this cutout for our layer. Hold Shift, click on both of those, and Control E to merge them, so now, You've almost got like a preview. I always lock this layer so I can't accidentally move it. And then you can click the eye tool to actually preview it as a banner. Because sometimes when you're designing it like this, you get a bit carried away. And if stuff's overlapping over the edge and you do this, you're not actually going to see anything that's in the black that's covered by the black bars. Also, another thing I like to do is just click on view and do lock guides. So that when your guides are locked, you can't actually accidentally move them if you're clicking on any of the rectangles or stuff. So then what you want to do is create a new layer. 
rectangle marquee tool again. If you hover over this top, this top or the bottom ruler, whichever way you prefer to do it, I always just ended up doing it from the top left one. Just roughly hover over it outside the canvas and then just drag it over the box and the rulers are going to help it snap into place. Then you're going to click on your primary color, select like a yellowish kind of hue. It's, it's really hard to see at this small scale, but when you're choosing a the yellow, there's always like an, it always ends up being like an orangey yellow or like a greeny yellow. For this cyberpunk theme, it's a slightly greeny yellow. So if you imagine the yellows in the middle, you've got green to the left, orange to the right, as you do on this or above and below on this hue strip, you want it to be kind of in between the yellow and green, but more yellow. Drag it all the way to the top right and just click OK and hit Alt Backspace. And as you can see, we filled it in with this yellow color. Then what you're going to want to do just for kind of compositional reasons, you're going to want to add your text next. So whatever your channel name is, this is where you want to go ahead and click the text tool, click anywhere on your canvas and just type in your channel name. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use the word cyberpunk. I've also downloaded the actual cyberpunk font, which is a free font. So you can go online and download it yourselves. I'll leave a link to one in the description below for the one I used. And the, the VA spacing on it is quite turned up on this font. So I'm going to do something like that. But as you can see, the K is kind of merged in with the N now. So what you can do is if you click or get in between the N and the K, hold Alt on your keyboard and use the right arrow key and you can slowly space out each letter so that if two letters actually look like they're too close to each other you can change that or you can even make them some of them close and some of them more spread out so it fits your kind of the aesthetic that you're going for i like something like that i'm just going to hit Control a v on the keyboard and then click these two buttons that i'm clicking here to just center it in the whole of our canvas so this is dead in the center now so we know that's perfect then what we're going to want to do is actually create some texture in the background so on the kind of cyberpunk posters and like advertising they have a lot of these kind of angled lines and stuff so we're going to use some of those in Photoshop to create our effect and hit P on your keyboard. That's gonna give us the pen tool. Make sure your primary color is black. Your stroke is set to black as well. You can do one pixel or two pixel. I'm gonna start off with one and you can always turn it up after if you like. And you're just gonna click somewhere like here, hold shift on the keyboard and then click somewhere diagonal down to the right and shift makes it only do it at 45 degree angles. So you can only do straight lines or diagonal lines with this, which is perfect for what the cyberpunk branding looks like come across somewhere like here make another angled line and then just have it go off the canvas like that so once so once you've done that you've got something that looks something roughly like this and that looks pretty cool in my opinion at least and then what we're going to do is make a new layer and we're just going to do some other sort of lines as well because we want to kind of frame the text that we've made for our banner so we're just going to make some angled lines something like this and really play around with these. You don't have to go with the first things like I am. The first one you come up with like I am just for this video, just to make sure that the time I'm spent making this isn't actually too long. Then what I'm going to do is create another new layer, hit the pen tool again. And this time we're going to make some lines that are going vertical. So we're going to click off the canvas again and just make some kind of angular lines pretty randomly, something like that. Now what I am actually going to do is if I hit P to bring up my pen tool options, I'm gonna turn the stroke all the way up to something like 45, 40, 50, about there, because then it creates a kind of gap. So it's almost like these two, two different sections that we've got now to our actual banner. So it's like there's a little kind of cut off thing, if you can kind of see it that way. Now, another thing Cyberpunk have in the background is all these kind of faded like city imagery. It's kind of like just a slightly subtle darker yellow. So what we're going to do is we're going to unhide the preview thing we're going to make a new layer underneath it and underneath our text layer as well and we are just going to create um some rectangle so you can create these completely randomly complete however you want just make sure your fill is black and your stroke is off you can even just simply copy and paste some of these to different parts if you wanted to make them different size literally just mess around with it almost making like a kind of cityscape in the background making sure we've got some of these different shapes. Now, if you press A on the keyboard, if it brings up this black arrow like it does here, if you hold click on the actual tool itself and come down to the white one, you can click on individual points and move them around. And so it allows you to do with any shape, if you hold on a point, you get to move them around. So if you press A, if you click and then hold shift on one of these corners, you can make some angles like that, just to get some different kind of building shapes going on. So as you can see, this is how it looks like that. Then what you want to do, 
is select all of your rectangle layers that you've just made, all of your building layers, by clicking on the top one and shift clicking on the bottom one in your layers panel, hitting control E, right click on that layer and now click rasterize. So now this is all kind of one big shape layer that we move together. In fact, I've just seen something here that I want to delete. So I'm just going to quickly marquee that out and delete it because it's like a tiny little gap and I don't like that. So I'm just going to make it a slightly bigger gap, something like that. Then what you want to do is over the top of these building like cutouts that we've just made, what you want to do it just get the rectangle mask key tool and just go and cut out some window shapes from them they doesn't have they don't have to be too detailed they can be pretty basic and kind of however you want them to be you don't have to do them in all the buildings some of them you can leave completely without any in them at all so now i've ended up with something like this and i've done this literally just by creating rectangles with the marquee tool and just pressing delete or backspace on my keyboard to make the window like that and then control z to undo it if i didn't like it so once you've got all the cutouts that you want to do you want to drag these underneath the kind of line textures that we've made earlier. You press V on your keyboard and now you press one on your keyboard. As you can see, it's made them like really faded into the background because you've basically turned the opacity down to 10%. That's just a little shortcut. If you press, if you're on that, the move, if you're on the move tool within Photoshop and you press any of the number keys while you've got a layer selected, it adds the opacity to it and if you press two really quickly you can type in more specific ones like 56 for example like i just did there whereas if you just hit one it'll do it down to 10. now i think this looks pretty cool but it doesn't like quite look right because we've got the color set to black so if we put the opacity back up double click on the layer select the color of our background click on the little color box to open up the color selector and just make it something that's ever so slightly darker than the actual banner itself and so now you've pretty much got a set template for your banner what we're going to do is add the text effect that cyberpunk has to give it that kind of blue accent so what you want to do is double click on the text layer that you've created and click on inner shadow you want to set the angle to 90 and you want depending on what font you use you might like a stronger distance however i've got mine set to about three or four i think i'm going to go with four for this tutorial and you want to set the color just to the blend mode to normal and just set this to a really light kind of neon blue and that will give you that kind of cyberpunk blue accented text that we like to do so once you've got to this point you've almost got the basics of your banner and now it's obviously very very minimal at the, at the moment so i'm going to show you some ways in which you can make yours kind of stand out and pop a bit more so you see we've got these lines kind of here these shaped lines what you could do is create a new layer zoom right into the line and click the pen tool make sure you're clicking actually on the line and you can just come and add some bits where the line gets slightly thicker and then so if you make a kind of shape and round it off, select the black fill and make your stroke on zero. You could even come in and make these even thinner just so it gives a slight bit of texture to each of the lines. Like so, and then you can copy and paste these about, change the length of them change if they're above or below the line and all kinds of stuff like that just to kind of give it different like thickness so for my banner i'm going to go something like that and i'm also now going to shift click on all of the shape and line layers that we've made and group them into a layer and call them lines then what we're going to do next is we're going to start using text as almost texture so it's not going to matter what we put too much however what i like to do is say your channel is going to be a gaming channel which if you're doing a cyberpunk themed banner it more than likely is it might not be who knows but i'm going to type in gaming and i'm going to choose a font that i know kind of looks like a typewriter -y kind of tech kind of font which is called source code pro which i think if you have the adobe programs it comes with it and we're going to make this text really really small something like three or four point and then what you're going to want to do so what you're going to want to do is once you so what you're going to want to do is if you're a gaming channel, once you found the font and you've made it really small, what you're going to want to do is almost type like stuff that you think would appear when like you see like someone hacking or like coding stuff. So what we're going to type is gaming. So it's like a little kind of hint within the, if you look really close at the details of the actual banner, we're going to type gaming.exe underscore progress equals 100%, something like that. Subscribed equals true i don't know something like this i'm not really like a coder or a hacker and stuff like that and if this looks too big what you can even do is go ahead and make this even smaller down to like two point and stuff like that and you just want to copy and paste this about where there's kind of a lot of empty space on your banner and just change what the words are so so for example over here i'm going to type liking 
underscore video, 86% underscore completion. And you want to pick just really random stuff, maybe even go and find some actual code, Google some and copy and paste it. And so you can get some nice text as texture rather than information on your YouTube banner. Now, when you're doing this, you can almost even just keyboard spam and just put stuff and just put stuff literally whatever, because it's just going to be texture for your thing. It doesn't actually matter what you're typing in these boxes. Another thing you can do if you think that these kind of city, if you think the kind of like buildings in the background are kind of standing out too much, what you can do is even just lower the opacity of the actual layer. I've got mine down to probably about 50%, maybe even lower if you wanted to. And what you could maybe do is add a layer above it, select the yellow color, get our brush layer, make it big by holding Alt, right clicking and dragging left or right to make our size bigger and up or down to make our up makes our hardness softer, down makes our hardness harder. We're gonna have it a nice large soft brush and you can just click in different spots to kind of so that the buildings aren't all the same like they're almost fading in which you won't really notice but when you have the when you have the background layer hidden you'll see it like this so you can kind of see it a bit more this is with it and this is without it just to kind of fade them in so they're not as obvious and you can tell that they're definitely meant to be more in the background and then one last thing if you wanted to include like socials and stuff or anything else kind of on the banner what i would recommend doing creating a new layer in the pen tool making your color this kind of nice ready kind of pink so it's not quite a purpley pink it's more in the red kind of side but it is still definitely pink something like this kind of color and just create almost like holding shift once more to keep with our theme of diagonal and straight lines that we've got just almost create this little like this little like almost create this little button symbol something like so just like this i'm doing it really quickly obviously you guys will make a much nicer version than the one that i'm making right here and just put this down to the bottom left i'm going to hold shift and change some of these that looks terrible and what you want to do and finally i know some of you guys might have like a second word in your name or you want to put something underneath the text or you want to put like a social media link or something what i like to do for this is hit the pen tool on a new layer and just create using these same kind of straight and diagonal lines almost create another like little button kind of shape underneath and this just helps to keep within this helps to highlight the bit of information that we want to actually put on this little tag or whatever it might be whilst keeping it within the cyberpunk kind of theme something like that and we're going to go with like a bright kind of pinky red kind of color and you just want to make sure that it fits somewhere underneath your banner where it's also going to get noticed so maybe somewhere like that and then what you can do is double click on that layer click on inner shadow once again and make set it to white make sure that make sure that it's set all the way to 100 turn off use global light so that if you change the angle of this one it doesn't change the angle of the inner shadow on your blue on your main text and in fact i'm even going to change the color of this Kind of button i'm going to make it more red than i had it but it's going to be slightly just under red it's not just going to be all the way in the red view bar and then what i could type inside of this is create a new layer new text layer and i'm going to type subscribe i'm going to choose a nice font that complements the one that we've already chosen for our heading so the font i've chosen is one called primal which i'll also leave a link to in the description and you just want to make the button kind of fit that word and give it enough kind of padding and room around it so it doesn't actually detract attention from our from our main part of the text but yeah guys that that is pretty much the basics of creating the kind of cyberpunk themed banner if you want to recreate it in the style of the game so yeah this kind of style is really fun to play around with and you can create so many different variations in the thing. I've been recording this at almost 40 minutes now because I've just been playing around with different styles and things I haven't planned. I've gone in and messed about with the themes of it and it's come out with some really strong ideas. I hope this inspires you. And as always, guys, if you have learned something new in today's tutorial or you did enjoy, please don't forget to leave a like on the video. And if you are new around here, please hit that subscribe button for more tutorials like this one every week. We're getting closer and closer to the end of 2020 and we're also getting closer and closer to hitting 200 subscribers on the channel. It'd mean the world to me if we could hit that number before 2021. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.